welcome to the 2017 Minnesota State Fair. This evening, we're at the Fine Arts Building, located at Cosgrove and Randall. Preview night is held before the State Fair opens for participating and non-participating artists and their friends. This is Jim Clark, the supervisor of the Fine Arts Building at the Minnesota State Fair. And it's a pretty busy night tonight, so can you just... Um... It's a great night, our preview night for the participating artists and their friends and family. Uh, the, the room's humming and a lot of nice energy. And thanks so much for coming out and interviewing some of the artists. Oh, always, and thank you for allowing us to. You bet. All right, thanks, Jim. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Okay, Carl, could you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Carl Bretzky. And what's the name of your piece? This is called Rocket Ride. And this is from a fair that was out in an Arizona desert uh, up against a mountain range. And I initially painted this as a plein air piece, a small sketch, and uh, came back to the studio and I, I liked the composition of enough. enough that I decided I would make a larger studio piece out of it. So, Could you uh, tell our audience what the medium is that you're using? Yeah, this is oil, and it's on a linen-covered panel. This is the first time you've been at the State Fair? No, I think this is the fourth time. The fourth yes. time? In yeah. a row or just on and off throughout the uh, years? I think I had one miss, so four oh. out of five years, yeah. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's been good. So what did you think being our very first interviewee of the evening? I love it. Okay. Do you have a website you'd like to uh, share that yes, people can go and see more of your artwork? Uh, absolutely. CarlBretzky.com. And that's Carl with a C and Bretzky is B-R-E-T-Z-K-E. -E. Uh, could you give us your full name and the name of your piece? Uh, my name is Scott Maggard. Um, and the name of my piece is uh, Unwisely Used. Could you elaborate a little bit more on um, what inspired this piece? Well, uh, the piece kind of originated from uh, the first idea I had was I was going to make a time machine, kind of a Ooh. phony time machine that I was going to work with. But then I kind of usually ju I just played off the word time. And uh, so I started working with elements of time. And uh, it just kind of worked into that. Well, is it a mixture of a birdhouse then and the time? Because this yeah. almost reminds yep. me it's, of a, uh, a birdhouse. It's kind of just playing with uh, like a cuckoo clock and or uh, a the tower. Hour, yeah, the hourglass and uh, a wristwatch. Most of my work, I like to work in, uh, you know, various materials, wood and uh, iron and steel and. So it's a mixed media. Mm -hmm. And then, do you do you sketch it out before you do it, or? You I sketch with it, yeah, quite a long time. <laughs> oh, you, you do. So you do quite a few different sketches, sure. and then you implement. Sure. And then I change it. Mm -hmm. But we can't play with it. No. A lot of people have asked me. Do you have a website or something where people can? Uh, reach yeah, you? I do have a website. Yeah. It's uh, um, scmaggartfineart.com. And would you uh, like to please introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Matt Oleg, and I'm the artist for this painting. And uh, can you tell about tell us about your piece? The name, technique, and if there's a story behind it. So this piece is a um, oil on canvas, and it was, um, it's called um, North Star Mill. And what it is is that it's the, uh, it's kind of like a cubist uh, reinterpretation of looking at how to paint paintings. So you have the outside of the North Star Mill, and then you have the inside kind of looking in. And it is essentially trying to create a painted memory of what the location is. Okay. Um, is this your first showing at the State Fair? This is. And uh, also the first time I uh, submitted work, so luck of uh, the draw, I guess. And uh, it looks like you've got a couple of awards there. What, what about, can you tell, you tell us about that? I just found out about these. Uh, apparently it was awarded uh, the Minnesota Artists Association Award of Excellence and the Banfield Lock Center for the Arts Award. Very I'm nice. I'm going to go look up and see what those are about. <laughs> well, I'm familiar with Banfield Lock. It's over in uh, Fridley. And it's a very oh, really? nice, very nice uh, museum there. Sounds very good. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to convey about your artwork here? No, I'm just happy to be a part of the uh, Minnesota State Fair. Um, do you have a uh, website you'd like to tell us about? 
I do. My website is mattolig.com, M-A-T-O-L-L-I-G. And I'm actually the only Matt Olig in the world. So you can find me on Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Just look, Matt, look for Matt Olig. Suzanne, could you uh, tell us your name and the name of your piece? I'm Suzanne Schaff, and this piece is called Cuba Man. Um, its subtitle is Juan Diego in Den and Dennis the Dog. And the uh, genre that you use, you use watercolor. It started out as a transparent watercolor, but when I got to the point where I wanted to make the wall look as uh, gritty and as authentic as it was when I found it in Cuba, uh, I decided I needed to add a little bit of gouache to it. So what you did is you took photos in Cuba. I did. And then when you got home, then you created your watercolor? Or I did. Um, I'm a professional photographer, so I took advantage of those skills to cut and paste and move everything around so that I had it exactly the way I wanted it before I started the painting. And then I added a number of elements to it um, in order to um, make it, um, to fill in spaces that needed um, to be done. So earlier you were talking about the space behind the grid that you said was quite dark and you lightened it. Well, one of the things I saw a lot in Cuba was um, laundry hanging out being um, um, dried everywhere from the tops of buildings as well as on the street. So this dark place right here looked a little, um, it, it took away too much attention. So I, um, I actually set up a clothesline in my dark garage and photographed clothes until I got the right combination and, and then dropped it into the, the painting. It sounds like uh, you really did a lot of photography work and, as you say, piece work to get the, the photo that you wanted. And you said you went to Cuba, uh, when was that? That was before it was open. About three and a half years ago. I went with a group of professional photographers. And you said you were there 14 days? 14 days. And how many thousands of pictures did you come home with? Well, that's kind of an embarrassing number. Um, probably about eight or nine thousand. Now, when a person first comes around and sees your piece, it does look like a photo. And I'm, I'm aware of that, and I, I find that kind of intriguing because my goal with watercolor is not to be photographic, but um, it seems like I worked it to the point yeah. where it does have that quality, Mary. It's, it's so detailed and so absolutely fabulous. It was, it was really fun. Um, the face on Juan Diego is actually an amalgam of the face of the fellow who was there, a friend of mine, and it has some elements of my own face in it. Have you ever entered the State Fair before? I did two years ago. And do you have a website where uh, anyone that's interested in your art can go and see more of this fabulous artwork? <laughs> um, I do. It's shafphotography.com. Thank you very much, Suzanne. Thank you, Mary. Would you uh, like to please introduce yourself? Um, my name is Marta Driesen. I'm a photographer uh, here in Minneapolis. And could you uh, like to tell us about the, about the artwork here, um, the name of it, the technique, uh, and the story behind it, if there is one? Certainly. Uh, this is a photograph I took, a uh, digital photograph I took in Oaxaca, Mexico. Um, I'm originally from Mexico. Okay. and. Um, this is from a, it's called a calenda, and it is a street dance from one of the indigenous uh, groups in the area of Oaxaca. Okay. Um, is this your first showing at the State Fair? Uh, no, it's, but it's been many years. Okay, okay. <laughs> Um, and would you have, give a website you'd like to promote? Um, um, sure, it's MarthaDriesen.com. And uh, do you have many other works like this available on, on your website? Um, yes, there's a lot of, uh, all of my work is there, and it is all black and white street photography. Beautiful, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, could you introduce yourself and give us the title of your piece? My name's Stuart Lockridge. Uh, the title of my piece is simply North Shore. It's a intaglio copper plate etching. And this is where we get to ask the question, what is intaglio? Intaglio is an incision into the deep, so you're inking the canyons that you create. So you could have a wood engraving, which would technically be intaglio, or a metal plate can be intaglio. Ink is in the lows. And 
I believe you said acid is used. Acid is used in a copper plate etching. So etching is from the Dutch word etzen, to eat. And I cover the copper plate with a wax and then draw with a needle, exposing the copper below the wax, and then put that exposed drawing into acid to create the depth of the line that I, w that I wish to have. So this piece would take a lot of patience and time. Do you use magnifying glasses at all because of the detail? I use magnifying glasses. I start over many times upon the plates. So when you don't like it, you just get rid of the plate and start from scratch? Yeah. Or can, you could flip it over and use the opposite side. I could side, start yeah. from on the back side, but generally the mistake only adds to creating the next one even better. Oh, all right. So rough drafts. And is this the main genre that you um, endeavor in or you enjoy? I also do watercolors, oils, and I make my own frames. Oh my gosh, so you're... Um, A full-on art factory. Yes. And I see you won an award. It got honorable mention. Well, that's good, though, right? That's and a is, good, great is, thing. Is it the first time you've been in the in the Minnesota State Fair? No, it's not. It isn't. So you've been here how many, several times? I've lost count. I don't know. Yeah. Stuart, do you have a website that um, our audience could go to to see your other works? I do. Uh, my website is www.stuartlockridge.com. Tricky to spell. S T U A R T. L O U G H R I D G E, StuartLockridge.com. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you for the interview. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Um, Dan Ellison. Jim. And tell us about your artwork here. Uh, you know, the name, the technique, yeah, you know, there's a story behind it. Well, my mom used to walk by this on her way to school. Okay. But I originally did it to describe the monoculture of the crops. Oh, sure. The lack of diversity. Okay. <laughs> but then I changed the name to Roseville so it'd be happier. Okay. Well, it, it looks... I didn't want it to be political. Okay. It looks more of a, like an homage to small America, small town America, rural America. Yeah, Roseville, North Dakota. Okay. Okay. Um, is this your first showing at the State Fair? No. No? It, how many years have you uh, been out here then? Twice. This is the second time. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. And uh, um, I noticed you won an award there. Can you tell us about that at all? Or? The Paul S. Kramer Award. Okay. And it, uh, okay. It's a great piece. It's very, uh, I like it because it's very stark. And I oh, think that. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm not very good at interviews. But. <laughs> yeah, not, not everybody is. Do you have a website at all for your artwork? Yes. <laughs> what is it? Cravado.com. Okay. All right, Bob, could you introduce yourself and tell us the name of your piece? Sure, my name is Bob Upton, and the name of this painting is called Easton Alley. And what techniques did you use for it? Uh, this is oil paint done outside, so it's called plein air painting. So I paint everything on location, and usually I do it in about three hours, but since this was so big, I did it in two morning sessions out in uh, Maryland uh, this summer. So you do everything outside, is that because some of the oil paints, are the, they are quite scenty? Yeah. yeah, but mainly so we can really see the color mm -hmm. and the light. It's, it's hard to see that in a studio, so it's really great to get outside and see the, the real color. So you're not like some artists who go out, take a photo, and then come back into a studio nope. and go that way. You want to be outside right. to actually get the correct lighting and shadow. Right. I don't even, I don't have a studio. My studio is my car is what I tell people. So oh. I just paint wherever I travel. And so you travel quite a ways or yep. different places. And yep. where, where was this painting done? This is on the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. It's a small little town called Easton, Maryland. Ooh. Yeah. Where we all want to retire someday. Yeah. Yes. It's a beautiful spot, beautiful old homes, and uh, people really enjoy painting there, so it's a fun trip. And is this your first time at the State Fair? No, I've been here in a couple times, but it's been a while, so it's, it's great to be in the show. So was it the same uh, genre, or did you do a different genre last time? Nope, it's the uh, same idea, painting outside. Outside? That's, yep, it's what I usually do. Hmm. Do you do any of the big city, or is it more small town? 
I paint all over. I love Everywhere. to paint water actually a lot. So whenever oh. there's a lake or a river, I love to paint that. So your website's going to be quite diverse as yeah, far as the see subject lots matter. Lots of different stuff. You bet. All right. Bob, do you have a website that people can go to and um, look at more of your art? I do. It's BobUptonStudio.com, or I also show a lot on Instagram. Just go to Bob Upton Studio, and you'll see a lot of stuff I'm doing uh, on a more recent basis. Would you like to introduce yourself to the camera here? Okay, thank you. I'm Molly Casey Hanrahan, and I'm a printmaker. Uh, I do calligraphs and uh, wood wood blocks. I've done silk screens and I've done uh, copper plate etchings. Okay. Um, currently, the piece that's in the show is a called a collagraph, which is uh, printed like an etching, except it's a handmade plate <laughs> that I made out of cardboard and ink and uh, polymer medium. Okay. And then I printed it. It's a two-plate print that uh, I inked up and printed in sync. So I had fun making it, and I intend to make more that on this uh, same style. Okay. And, and tell us about this particular piece, the name, if there's a, okay. is there a story behind it. it. It looks like a very whimsical piece. It looks very fun. So uh, just give us a little story about it. Okay, okay. Well, I love birds. I've been uh, depicting birds for the past three years. Um, they're not to be named. They're my own imagina uh, imagination and using color and shape to describe a okay. bird. Okay. And it is whimsical. Do you have anything else would you like to add uh, about this? No, I just enjoy printmaking and always have. I have a master's in visual design from Illinois Institute of Technology okay. and um, have been and printing it, ever since. Is this your first showing at the State Fair? No, I was in the State Fair art show uh, many years ago when I was uh, just out of college and I had a, a pretty large sculpture here, a ceramic sculpture. I okay. uh, did it at the uh, University of St. Catharines. Okay. So, it's my second appearance. Well, it, I hope to be in the show again. <laughs> well, it's a very lovely appearance. Do you have a website or somewhere where I you do show, where you can see more Instagram of your art? I do have Instagram and I have a, an email, but okay. I'm not totally set up yet for um, online yes. okay. sales. But what, what's your Instagram page? It's called Molly H. Prince. Okay. And um, I have another page that I'm working on, and I intend to have it up in the next six months, and it'll be Molly Prince. So I'll have a variety of different prints on that. We appreciate your time. Thank you okay, so much. Okay, thank you for having me speak. Could you introduce yourself and give us the name of your piece? My name is Stanley Coombs, and uh, the, the piece is called Whither Goeth I? This is a photograph and it's taken where? It's taken in Regensburg in Germany. We were discussing this photo a little bit earlier and I noticed there was a pallet mm -hmm. up here. Yeah. A painter's pallet and then you showed me something else that I totally missed. What had happened was that uh, the pallet is the sign of a, an art shop and the, uh, the shop owner had painted the cobbles into his doorway for commercial reasons, obviously. Um, and uh, I saw it and I looked and I thought, no, I can either go all the way up there and disappear around the corner, or I can go into the shop, follow the little, little colored stones. And uh, so the piece is called Whither Goeth I? It creates uh, the question, and I really like pieces that have a question in them. This kind of photo is, is uh, it, it's typical of, of, of things that I like to do. I like, as I said, if it's got a natural question in it. There was another one that I did uh, a couple of years ago where there was uh, in Lisbon, and one side of a table outside was an old man. The other side were two 20-somethings. And the difference between the two was amazing, and I just called it the, the great divide, you know, because of the, 
it, it spoke to me just the same as this spike it speaks to me. So when you go and take a photo, you are actually looking for a story. Story. It's very a, much a journalism. A specific story. Yes, yes. This is my curiosity. Did you follow the path all the way to the end of the street? I, I went in both. <laughs> I went to the end and I also went and followed the little colored stones. So have you ever been accepted at the State Fair prior? No, this is my fourth attempt and this is the first time I've managed and to get it. And you in. made it. Wow. Did anybody find out your different works? Were it... ah, it's usually by word of mouth. Because I know and you I, have some I, fabulous stuff. I show at the uh, Hopkins Center for the Arts. The Arts Book? Do you have yes. Facebook? Yes. And what is your Facebook page? It's under the name Stanley Coombs. Okay. And is it all right for me to uh, put that on the, underneath a caption? Sir. And is there anything else you would like to tell our audience? I think I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's start off. Why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves? Hi. My name is Cara Hirsch, and I live in Minneapolis area. And Dan Volanik from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Okay. Um, this is one of your pieces here tonight. Um, tell us a little bit about this, uh, this piece. The title is intriguing to me, so give us a little story behind it if you can. The title stems from Joshua 1.9. Oh, okay. It's a small segment of that. First of all, Kara is the middle of three sisters. Okay. So last year, if anybody attended the fair, Delay, her older sister, was in the fair, uh -huh. charcoal drawing. And this year's car, I don't know about next year if Shannon will make it or not, <laughs> okay. but the idea is to complete this scripture verse using the three daughters. Okay. And, and I was noting, you know, when you first look at this, this artwork, uh, it looks like a photograph, but it's in pencil and charcoal, as you said. The intricacies in it are amazing. Uh, the background, like you were speaking earlier, it's got a nice soft background. And explain the detail that goes into that, or you know, the work that goes into that. Well, they look soft, and for anybody that's attempted to draw, it's easy to draw using lines, and it's mm -hmm. also easy easier to draw using sharp edges. But there are no sharp edges in this. It's every edge has to be softened, okay. which takes a tremendous amount of time. But I do that because I like the effect, and it does tend to set my work apart from other people's work. It, it's slow. Every piece I do takes one to two hundred hours. Wow, okay. But I love the effect of it. And uh, there's a lot of give and take on some pictures. So this picture, uh, there was quite a struggle in the middle. Okay. I changed a lot of it. And because I work on Stonehenge paper, which is the most famous art paper probably in the world, you can put a lot of graphite and charcoal on and take a lot off and the paper is very resilient. Okay. It, it you know, it, holds up to the fight, to the struggle <laughs> very well. Okay. And Carl, you're sitting for this uh, this portrait. How long was your session to sit for that, that artwork? So we actually took several different photos okay. and video footage that Dan used in order to produce this picture. So this actually wasn't one single photo that he took from. Okay. It was a it was based on many, many different photos and video footage okay. too. All right, awesome. And the detail, I was just stunned by the detail. You have, you know, the, the crevices. You can see the veins in the hand. It, is it really difficult to get that kind of detail in, in a piece like this? I suppose, but I have been drawing all of my life okay. and had great instruction um, from Richard Lack and his uh, cohorts at okay. the Atelier years and years ago. So the hardest part is to get the softness and to not make it look overworked Okay. Uh, it's easy to make a hand, for instance, it's easy to make it look old. Sure. It's not so easy to make it look young. And sure. And, and it, like I say, it's a beautiful representation of Kara. Um, you have another uh, piece here, the three sisters that you mentioned. And I understand that most artists only allowed one entry. How, how is it you came to have two entries here? The demonstrators are allowed a second piece. Okay. And so I'll be demonstrating on Friday, September 1st from 9 to 9 and all of these people will get a day at the fair and you can come and interact with all the artists. Awesome, that is so great. Um, do you have a website for your, your work? I do, danvolanik.com if you just Google that or even Google, 
Google <laughs> just Dan Volanik and my work will come up. Sound very great. Um, again, it's a wonderful piece. I appreciate you talking to us. Thank you and, and continued good luck. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure <laughs> and thanks. Uh, great meeting you and the crew. All right. What makes your community feel like home? Is it knowing what's happening in your neighborhood? Or when people know your name? Connections make us a community. For more than 30 years, Northwest Community Television has connected citizens, neighbors, even sports fans through video. You can learn about the latest news through our truly local newscast. We cover and air around 150 high school sporting events every year. For our cities, we air parades and city meetings that you can watch whenever you want. Then, any citizen of our cities can create and share their own original content. We'll even teach you how to use the equipment too. We have always provided you with a connected community experience. And as life gets busier than ever, we will continue to engage, inform, and inspire through CCX Media. So you can stay connected to the place you call home.